name is Fiona and I'm going to be taking you through the macroscopic structure of the brainstem. Now the brainstem, what is it? Well, if you think of the brain as a cauliflower, the stalk of that cauliflower is the brainstem. And the brainstem consists of three main parts, although in these diagrams, particularly the first two, as I'm sure you can see, um, the thalami, which you can see here, are not actually part of the brainstem, but they're usually included as the top of it. And so the brainstem consists of three main parts. If we start here, the lowest part of the stalk is the medulla oblongata which for sure we call the medulla. And the next part, which is just uh, rostral to it, and remember with the terminology, towards the tail end of the spinal cord is caudal, towards the uh, top end is rostral. So rostral to the medulla oblongata, we have the pons, and pons is Latin for bridge. So it's basically the bridge between the two cerebellar hemispheres. And above that, we have the midbrain. Okay, and so you can see those similar structures on the dorsal aspect as well, if we sort of connect them roughly that way. And likewise on the cross section, I'm sorry this is not exactly right, but you'd sort of see it at that particular position. Now on the ventral surface, which is this one, and ventral means anterior, We've got a few different uh, distinguishing features that allow us to recognize different parts of the brainstem. So for instance, the only part of the midbrain you can really see um, ventrally is the, uh, are the cerebell uh, cerebral peduncles, which are these things here. And the cerebral peduncles carry information um, from the uh, cerebral hemispheres down to other parts of the body, well, down to other parts of um, the central nervous system. And they consist of the corticopontine, corticobulbar, and corticospinal tracts. Now on the ventral surface, we can also see the pons, which I mentioned earlier. And the ventral surface, so particularly this region here inside this sort of rectangle here, this region is called the basis pontus. And it's just a fancy name for the base of the pons. And so in the middle of that, there's this groove that we have here. And that groove is known as the basilar groove. And the basilar groove is where we find the basilar artery. Uh, that supplies this particular region of the brainstem. And various cranial nerves come off the brainstem at particular locations, but we're not going to go into that today. Now, on the, um, on the medulla, we've got other particular distinguishing features. And um, so, for instance, at this point here, so remember how we were talking about the corticospinal tracts earlier? Well, they descend in this particular region here that I've just sort of colored in. And this region, these regions are known as the pyramids. Now, they don't really look that pyramidal, but they look a bit more pyramidal under a microscope. And then lateral to the pyramids, we've got these other structures originally, which look a bit like olives. So with the originality that anatomists have, they were called olives. And they contain the inferior olivary nuclei that are important in learning new, uh, new movements. Now, going back to the corticospinal tract that descends in the pyramids, there is a point about here where the pyramids cross over. And that point is called the pyramidal decussation. And decussation is a fancy term for crossing. And it is at that point that that's the arbitrary point from which we get the junction between the medulla and the spinal cord. And that's also the point 
It's sort of an arbitrary point, but that's the point where um, we have the foramen magnum in the skull. So that should be pretty much it for the ventral surface, although there is another feature that I did just miss. Um, up here, we've got these structures here called the mammillary bodies. And superior to that, so just behind that, and I'm just going to colour that in yellow, so just superior to it, and it's a bit tricky to see, that's where the hypothalamus is. And then here we've got the optic chiasm. Okay. So now if we move on to the ventral surface, obviously, as we can see from this, this picture, uh, the ventral surface looks quite different from uh, the uh, dorsal, uh, sorry, the dorsal surface looks quite different from the ventral surface. And so on the ventral surface, if we're looking at the midbrain, so ventrally we could see the cerebral peduncles, but dorsally we don't, we don't really see them at all. We see some different structures. So here we've got these four lumps that look like hills. Well, that's what the early anatomists used to call them. And so hence the name colliculus, which means hill. And so we've got two pairs. So here we've got the superior colliculi. And what the superior colliculi are for, are for visual reflexes. And then I'm going to just colour this in green, but just quarterly to that, we've got the inferior colliculi. And together, these structures form what's called the tectum. And the inferior colliculus, if I didn't explain earlier, was involved in auditory reflexes. Rosterally to the uh, superior colliculus, we've got the pineal gland here. And that's involved in circadian rhythms. Now, if we go towards the level of the pons, we find a few other structures in there. Um, back here, we'll have the exit of the trochlear nerves. And at that point below, we've, we're in the pons area. And so this diamond shaped region is called the rhomboid fossa because it looks like a rhombus, really original naming. But the rhomboid fossa is the point where um, the ventricles of the, so we've got the fourth ventricle here and this is the floor of the fourth ventricle. And so inside here, is also known as the open medulla because we've opened out. And so the pond sort of lies above around this region here. And so some of the, some of the fourth ventricle extends into the medulla, hence the name the open medulla. Up this way, we'll have the um, cerebral aqueduct, which we'll see in the um, sagittal section that I'll go into soon. And uh, quarterly to the rhomboid fossa, we have, we'll have the, um, the central canal extending from the spinal cord through the medulla. Now we've got a couple of other structures that we need to go through here as well. So we've got these things. So remember earlier we had the cerebral peduncles. We will now go through cerebellar peduncles. So we've got three cerebellar peduncles. So the biggest one is this one that we've got here, which is the middle cerebral pedun cerebellar peduncle. Sorry. And what that does, it basically links the pons to the cerebellum. Just about here, we've got the superior cerebellar peduncle. And that basically links the midbrain to the pons. And then finally, we've got here, roughly about here, we've got the inferior cerebellar peduncle and that links the medulla to the cerebellum. Inside the rhomboid fossa we've got a few other features. So if we look at that line in the middle that line is known as 
the sulcus limitans, which as the name suggests, it's a, it's a groove that ends, and that's an embryological remnant. And inside we'll see other um, bumps and things that represent particular features. So for instance, at this point over here, you've got something called the facial colliculus. And that basically is the point where a part of the facial nerve pushes out another part of the brainstem. Likewise, we have other nuclei of our, um, cranial nerves. So here, at this particular point on either side of the sulcus limitans, we'll have something called the hypoglossal trigon. And as the name suggests, that's where the hypoglossal nucleus is. And laterally to it, we'll have the vagal trigon. And that's where the dorsal motor nucleus of the vagus nerve is. Inferior to that, we'll have um, different parts of the dorsal column visible. So at the point, um, the point of the, um, where the central canal starts, which is also known as the obex, we've got two sets of tubercles. So we've got one here, which is from the gracile fasciculus. So that's the gracile tubercle. And that's the tubercle um, involved in from information from the legs. And likewise, laterally to that, we'll have the cuneate tubercles. And then inferiorly to that, you can actually see it on an actual on actual specimens if you look at them, but this way, that is the gracile fasciculus. And then laterally to it, as I'm sure you can guess, would be the cuneate fasciculus. And these are features of the uh, medulla. Now, if you look at a sagittal section of the medulla, you can see some of these features, but the purpose of this particular diagram is to show different regions of the brainstem. This region here, this is where the colliculi are. This is called the tectum. And because it surrounds the aqueduct, there's a particular region in here called the periaqueductal gray. And then, in here, this nucleus here, which as my colouring suggests, is the red nucleus. And that's important in regulating movement of your hands and fingers. Anteriorly to that, which I'll colour in in blue because I can't go any darker, here is the substantia nigra, which has dopaminergic neurons that are important in uh, initiating movement amongst other things. And then anteriorly to that, we have the anterior, so this is where the peduncles are, which we colored in earlier. This is the, where the pyramids are and the rest of the medulla. And this is the pons. And inside the pons, which I've got colored in in circles, these little circles here are pontine nuclei. And the pontine nuclei are where um, the fibers from the cerebral cortex going by the corticopontine tract synapse. So these are the pontine, oop, pontine nuclei. Here. Now, here that I'll color in green, that's the olive. This whole column here, which contains the cranial nerve nuclei, the reticular formation, which is involved in visceral function, in vital functions, amongst other things, and also um, other components, somatosensory components, that is the tegmentum. So the tegmentum forms the core of the brainstem. And back here, we've got the ventricular system. So here's the fourth ventricle. Here is the aqueduct, the cerebral aqueduct. And then here is a central canal. 
And just back here, we will have the dorsal columns. So overall, if we can see from this mess, this is the features of the brainstem. And in future videos, we're going to go through slices through the brainstem, beginning with slices through the medulla. I hope that was useful. Thank you. Thank you.